Welcome, 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 everyone. Great to have you here. I'm Rob Tatro, President and Founder of CMV Canada and the Canadian CMV Foundation. This is an ongoing series of our, of our bi-weekly Wednesday, uh, noon Eastern time, CMV Live series. We're thrilled to have you here today. Uh, I'm going to bring in today's guest, but before I do that, I do want to recognize that in Canada here, I proudly wear my poppy. Today is the 11th day of the 11th month. And for me, in central time right now, it is the 11th hour where we recognize our fallen soldiers and Remembrance Day, which is a holiday in most Canadian provinces. Just take a quick moment uh, to take a solemn minute, second moment to recognize that. Thank you to all the fallen soldiers. Uh, anyone who's donated any time uh, their life, who's devoted uh, their time to that, we thank you, we value you. Uh, we wouldn't be here today without you. Canada is incredibly grateful as you are in the US with Veterans Day. Okay, I'm gonna bring in our presenters today. We're thrilled to have them here. We got uh, Janelle Cosby, let me bring her in right away. I'll bring in Cedric Pritchett as well. And I'll also bring in Francis uh, Sacoccio. So hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm, I'm a French Canadian, so I'm doing the best I can. Welcome, uh, thankful to have you here. Grateful, really pumped to have you guys here telling the story about the Florida CMV Collaborative. Uh, we're going to get to that in a sec, but I, uh, before we do that, just a reminder that we're doing this as a build-up towards Ottawa 2021, which you know we were supposed to host Ottawa 2020, the Public Health and Policy Conference. Uh, instead, now we're doing this live series, which is going to build momentum all the way to Ottawa 2021. CMB Canada is thrilled to have partnered with Merck. We're thrilled to have partnered with National CMB Foundation. We're thrilled to have partnered with uh, NCHAM, and we're also thrilled to have partnered with uh this yes um cmb public health and policy conference so we're thrilled uh, to have all our sponsors on board with us this is going to be fun because we continue to talk about cmb the momentum the research that is actually happening on the ground this cmb collaborative is really really interesting because i was thinking about it over the weekend i, I reviewed your slides in preparation this is something that i think could easily be done in any province in any state in any kind of area to try to move the needle for screening. So I was pumped when I saw the presentation. I was thrilled to have you guys here today. Um, Janelle, clinical audiologist, researcher at the University of Central Florida. Uh, we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, Cedric Pritchett, pediatric otolaryngologist. Oh, you got it. All right, nailed it. At Nemours Children's Hospital in Florida, a medical director of the cochlear implant program. That's huge for those of you that know about CMV. Cochlear implants are obviously a big part of it. And for, and Dr. Francis uh, Sacoccio or Sacoccio? Sacoccio. Sacoccio, got it. Pediatrics Infectious Diseases Specialist with University of Florida. Uh, Shan, so Pediatrics ID. We work a ton with Peds ID. You guys are invaluable. The research, all of you, the work all of you three do, we're thrilled. Nobody wants to hear me talk, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> I'm going to give you guys the floor. I'm going to step back uh, and we're going to uh, go through uh, some of the work that you guys have done in Florida with respect to the CMB collaborative that you've built, with respect to raising awareness, with respect to increasing uh, the, the push to have universal screening. Remember, we as CMB Canada, we're pushing hard to have universal screening in every single province. We have it in Ontario. It is coming to the other provinces. We are pushing hard to get either legislative change or protocol change to have CMV universal screening, saliva-based CMV universal screening in every province in the country. So uh, we're pushing hard for it. I'm glad to see you guys are as well. I will step back. We'll get the presentation up and uh, I'll shut up now. Thanks so much for being here. I will leave the microphone to you. Thank you, Rob. Appreciate it. So um, thank you for, for having us uh, here to present our working collaboration um, here in Florida among several universities and partners um, as we look to advance the advocacy for CMV as well. I'm gonna advance the slide, there we go. So just looking at the numbers in Florida, um, these were provisional from Jessica Meyer and her team uh, with the Florida Early Hearing and uh, Intervention Coordinator Program. Um, we've had almost 400,000 newborns uh, or births in the state. And of those, um, you can see the breakdown of um, hearing loss refers. 
of those, we had uh, almost 300 with confirmed hearing loss. And then thus far, as of 2019, all the data is not in for 2020 yet, we've had five confirmed cases of CMV. Looking at the data from research conducted by uh, Das Petzquell and et al., we're seeing that they were able to successfully link the newborn screening database with the live birth certificate base and um, coordinate um, the number of CMV cases that were here in Florida as of 20 or 2008, actually. So they had several counties that they drew the, uh, the data from and several facilities as well, which yielded around 35,000 records that they were able to successfully link. And of those, they were sampling 3,100 um, samples. And of those, 14 were confirmed CMV cases. So that just gives you a little bit of a perspective of what our numbers look like here in the state of Florida. Absolutely. Thank you. I believe, you know, as well, um, the numbers here in Florida were just shy of that half percent to one percent we see throughout our country. So with that background in mind and, and realizing that Florida on average has approximately 215 to 200 and uh, yeah, 215,000 live births a year, uh, there was a huge need um, and a huge opportunity. And so we on the academic side uh, started talking about what can we do to move this needle forward? Understanding that there were several models that were out there. Of course, Utah being the first and foremost, but there had been work and uh, efforts done in California and New York and Iowa at this time. We also saw what Maine had done uh, with some of their work in trying to get uh, collaboration together. So we opted to say, well, why don't we bring some of the clinicians and scientists and researchers and teachers together uh, apart from uh, our legislative leaders to start talking about what are we seeing and how can we move things forward? So that original conversation happened back in April of 2018. And, and uh, we really were asking, what was the CMV story in Florida? Um, who are the stakeholders that need to be involved in that discussion? And what does the opportunity for collaboration across health system, across uh, institution look like? There were five uh, initial uh, members in that conversation, um, but by June, that number had grown from five to seven. Um, and at that time, we actually had a featured speaker, Dr. Al Park from the University of Utah come in as kind of our inaugural keynote address. Um, and right here in the center of the state uh, kicked this off. We emerged from that with a definition for the collaborative, a working group of vested stakeholders concerned and committed to advancing better outcomes for our children in Florida with congenital cytomegalovirus, really highlighting three goals, promoting awareness, pursuing discovery and best clinical practice management and supporting legislative advocacy. By December, we had grown to about, I believe that's nine or 10 um, with some help from the University of Utah as we look at different institutions in Central Florida, in Northern Florida, in Southern Florida. And uh, by last month, we had a good solid uh, 11 or so, including the Departments of Health, the National Seam Foundation, Joe DiMaggio's Children's Hospital, Nemours Children's Hospitals, Tampa General Hospital, the Universities of Central Florida and South Florida, the University of Miami, the University of Florida in Gainesville, Winnie Palmer's Hospital for Babies and Children and Wolfson's Children's Hospital. So now we're gonna take a little bit of time and kind of delve more into how those three pillars within the collaborative works and some of the activities that are happening there. Sure. So we see in, in terms of the educational awareness, I love the, the quote that I uh, obtained from the National CMV organization that you know, we want to always keep in mind that we are moving the needle forward as much as possible with educational awareness, advocate, advocacy, policy changes. So we're making some strides, um, which is very promising. 
we see that the states in blue do currently have legislation passed for CMV uh, screenings. We also see that the lighter blue, it's kind of hard to see um, uh, in this presentation mode, but the lighter blue states um, are, are moving towards um, laws that have been proposed and hopefully legislation as well. Um, we have the other states in gray that are, you know, just trudging forward and, and doing our best to get some legislation and policies and procedures in place to hopefully implement um, in the near future. And then we've got Maine and Ohio that have proposed additional laws towards uh, CMV and they're still working towards those goals as well. So lots of movement going on, not only nationally, but also um, as we're aware internationally. One very instrumental person has been uh, Dr. Pritchett here in uh, Central Florida area, bringing together uh, teams uh, at Nemours and uh, throughout the Central Florida region, as well as parents to advocate and make the, the not only the public, but also other healthcare practitioners aware of CMV and um, the importance it is to have that policy in place so that we can you know, catch these babies as early as possible and, and have that screening implemented for um, potentially better outcomes for those individuals. So we've had, um, as Cedric mentioned earlier, we kicked it off with Dr. Albert Park coming in and presenting on his research and uh, that he's been conducting in, in Utah and beyond some of his clinical trial information. And so that was a great start to our uh, working uh, collaborative. Then uh, we were going to move forward with having um, Dr. Bapano in as well, but unfortunately due to the pandemic, we had to cancel that ground, grand rounds, but hopefully we'll be able to get back together and have him come in and do his presentation uh, sometime soon in the near future. And most recently um, in October, we had um, two of the researchers from our collaborative at USF Health um, talk about CMV and the timing of, of when to you know, take action and, and get things going for um, their research and, and the collaborative. So then we can look at the arm of our group that has been involved in discussing practice, what's best, what works, what are we doing, what are you doing, uh, and diffusing that information. Francis. So. Can you see the slides there? So the collaborative has had some virtual conference calls looking at the details of screening programs and outcomes around the state. We're starting to work on building collaborative research projects around the state, and we're discussing potentially starting a registry of the babies born with congenital CMV within Florida. So back in February of 2020, we sent out a Red cap survey to the collaborative, which at that point we had seven institutions that responded to look at the state of screening around Florida. And these are self-reported live birth numbers from each site that responded to the survey. But among the seven institutions that responded, they represent about 40,000 live births per year throughout Florida and approximately a thousand infants who failed their hearing screen. And as you can see from the map, they're kind of spread out between Orlando, South Florida, and then up here in Gainesville. Next slide. So these are some results from our survey. So four out of the seven responding institutions are screening for congenital CMV. All of these institutions do perform ABRs prior to well baby discharge for the infants who failed their hearing screen. Of the institutions that are screening, 
two are using urine as the primary screening method. One is using saliva and one is using a combination of saliva and urine. Both method, methods have been shown to be fairly equivalent with the preference that a lot of institutions are using saliva because it's a little easier to collect. Um, and then as far as indications for screening, all institutions that are doing screening are failing their infants who fail their hearing screen, especially in the well baby nursery. Um, most of them are also sending screening on babies that are small for gestation, gestational age or have microcephaly. There's one, and I believe since we sent out the survey, a second institution that's screening high risk perinatal exposures to HIV infants. And then <clears throat> there is one institution that was screening all infants under 33 weeks gestational age in their NICU. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this shows the breadth of what's going on in the state. And we're hoping to expand that over the coming years. Absolutely. And then we kind of looked at the arm of the collaborator that was more involved in some discussion and dialogue between our elected officials and, and, and state leaders with the legislative advocacy arm. This is the end of September. Uh, a few of us who were members of the uh, collaborative were able to have a, a, a virtual conversation with Representative Jason Shope, who is a District 7 um, uh, legislator. Uh, who is now reelected for a, a new term, looking at what's happening here uh, in Florida. Also on that call was a representative from the uh, Surgeon General's office, his chief of staff, and uh, the division chief for the Florida uh, Departments of Health, uh, 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 CMS, uh, Children's Medical Services uh, Division. So in that conversation that we had, we really tried to lay some framework uh, about what we thought would be a, a, an approach here in Florida. Um, as you are familiar with, with what's happening in, in, in Canada and the provinces, each, each state is, is different in understanding how to keep children at the center of these efforts, but uh, aware of some of the uniqueness that comes with the legislative process was important. And so we felt the lowest hanging fruit in that conversation was really pushing tremendously to increase the educational efforts. We we've, we've are familiar with and have seen the literature that talks about how uh, poorly informed, particularly women of childbearing age, but, but really everybody is when it comes to CMV compared to, of course, coronavirus and, and Zika, um, which notably so, I mean, that's understandable given their, their mortality. Um, but this is something that should not be ignored. Uh, also, we've talked about the potential for expanding the blood spot card retention. Here in the United States, there's variable lengths of time that that blood spot card, the Guthrie card, is kept. Some states indefinitely. Here in Florida, it's about six months. And so as an otolaryngologist, seeing a child in my, my office who is coming for a uh, failed hearing screen, if I unfortunately can't see that child before six months of age, then um, I, I lose the ability to go back in time. And so having that blood spot card around a little bit longer would be another opportunity to try to improve the diagnosis and potential management for these children. Um, next up, of course, is targeted screening, uh, which is uh, huge when it comes to embracing the swath of children who are potentially at risk for this. But we know that this too falls short. And so hence universal screening would indeed be the gold standard. And uh, here we're looking at how on the scientific side and the caregiver side, we can be a part of those discussions. Um, so that's kind of a, you know, a real brief summary and highlight about what the collaborative is doing, uh, looking at growing awareness with social media, news outlets, uh, public educational lectures, um, looking to diffuse and talk amongst ourselves about what we're doing and how we're treating these children, journal club reviews, those kinds of things. And then having conversations with our with our leaders about uh, the impact uh, and the uh, nature of this more hidden uh, cause for significant morbidity in, in, in our country. Our next states are expanding the collaborative membership uh, and continuing the conversation with leadership here uh, locally. Uh, just wanted to give a shout out to the institutions that have been uh, uh, impactful in this conversation, and we hope. Uh, that should next time we meet, uh, we'll have uh, double the number of, of logos represented here. Thank you very much.
I think you're muted there. Muted. Yeah, there we go. Yes, there you go. All right. Nice work, guys. Congrats. Um, Thank you. This is fantastic. Thrilled to have you here. Guys, take a moment if you're watching to subscribe, YouTube, uh, subscribe on Facebook, like our stuff. This has been fantastic work. I'm thrilled to have been able to share this story. I'm so thankful that you guys took the time to share this story. Don't forget to subscribe. Go to our newsletter, uh, cmvcanada.com. Uh, make sure that you're aware of what's happening because Ottawa 2021 is going to be fantastic. You guys are going to be there. You're going to love Ottawa. It's a fantastic city. I've been pumping the tires of Ottawa nonstop <laughs> on this channel here. Um, also, next Wednesday, uh, sorry, two Wednesdays from today, Wednesday, November 25th, the presentation is on pragmatic skills and mental health in children with CMV infection and cochlear implants. It's going to be a good one. So thank you all. Uh, happy Veterans Day to our American friends. Uh, I don't know if you could say happy, but anyways, uh, thank you to all the fallen soldiers. And let's take a moment today to think about them in what is Remembrance Day in Canada. Thanks so much, guys. Have a great day. And uh, we'll talk real soon. Thank you, Rob. You too. Bye-bye.